morning. It's Thursday morning again, and welcome to another 30 Minutes with Jan. And I want to start this morning off with a disclaimer. I'm a financial advisor, not an immigration advisor, but to talk about immigration, here's Vanita. Vanita, good morning. How are you? Good morning. Good morning, Jan. I like your disclaimer. I'm also going to make a disclaimer that, yes, I am an immigration advisor, but what I'm going to say is general advice of what's going on in the New Zealand market right now. It's yeah. not specific advice, okay? And I'll yeah. try my best to give you some general information or answer your questions as best as I can, okay? And, and thanks, thanks for always being willing to talk to us. And I know it's um, I'm pressing your button. <laughs> you know, it's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure, Jan, and you know, I see some questions coming through from the Facebook pages and so on, and sometimes I go, oh, you know, um, maybe people should know what's going on. Yeah. Lots of changes every week, God knows how many amendment circulars we get and so on, you know, and um, it's just crazy with regards to changes and the changes that are coming through in the next few months as well. So it's good to sort of talk about that and, and sort of clear up a few things for people. What about the, the current uncertainty? And I'm going to call it the uncertainty in, in the job market because people are needed here, but people can't come here and employers and employees don't know what's going on. So, so let's just say this. Everything has to do with the border settings right now, okay? And the border settings right now, you, you will see some people are coming in and that's, that's happening, okay? The way the border settings are is these people are getting border exemptions with the support of their employers, okay? okay. So definitely critical workers, you know, health care projects that are government to government, list of projects and so on, those people are definitely coming in. Then on the 14th of March, we had an announcement where, where we said, or immigration um, uh, and the government has said, other critical workers can come in, but you must be earning 1.5 off the median wage to be able to come in. Okay. And again, it's a border exemption, all right? It's not where you can just apply for a job and come in. Your employer needs to support you, all right? Yeah. So that's where you'll find people coming in. And with that, so if we talk numbers of what the salary needs to be, it's it's a it's eighty four thousand. Um, sorry, <laughs> let me just see here. Eighty four thousand two four zero. It's early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> it is early in the morning. I haven't had a coffee. <laughs> okay. Oh no. <laughs> but it's okay. I can I, I can work without coffee. It's all right. So we're we talking eighty four thousand odd. Um, uh, yeah, is what people need to be earning to be able to get that border exemption under other critical worker to come yeah. in. All right. And if the other critical worker is earning um, 106,080 uh, or above, they can apply for the 2021 resident visa, which closes on the 31st of July. So that is actually a bonus for those people that are getting over the 106K and are coming in. It's like getting the golden ticket that uh, Absolutely. Come dance with me. What is it? <laughs> Absolutely. It's getting the golden ticket uh, from, from what? Willy Wonka, isn't it? The golden yeah. ticket. <laughs> That's one, yeah. 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 And pretty much being able to come in on the critical purpose visitor visa, being able to work and apply for residence. And you can bring your family in as well. So okay. just remember those, those things. That's where people are coming in. So... Don't feel that, oh, my God, the borders are opening. They're opening with border exemptions, All right? But the amount of people that come in is this amount? That amount, exactly. Yeah. It's a very, it's really... very tiny amount, okay? Yeah. And I don't know whether you heard the minister saying um, that, you know, we, we are giving 165,000 um, residence visas to those people onshore that are eligible, but there's also 60,000 on top of that that has not been accounted for. Okay. okay, so that's what uh, 200 and well, sorry, you can figure that, that math out. Okay, yeah, 225,000 or something like that. Yeah, yes, that are going to get residents. Okay, that means that our residence program, which has not been set at all since um, January 2020, is going to reduce quite massively. Usually, okay. a residence program is, program is about 45,000 people or, or places 
in an 18-month period. Now, that's going to reduce, mass, reduce massively because residence has been given to this 200,000 people or, yeah. or applicants, I should say, and family members as well. Okay, so that's where that is. So on the 1st of May is when visa-waived travellers can come in. And I think I've seen some comments where people have said, I'm a South African citizen, but I also hold a British passport. Can I travel to New Zealand? Yes, you can. Very, very good yes. question. Yeah. But yes. They have and to yes, travel then on the British passport. As, as that's right, right. Yeah. yeah. You enter on the British passport or whichever passport that's visa yeah. waived. Um, and obviously you leave on that passport as well. So those people can come in from the 1st or 2nd of May. Okay. And uh, yeah. So interesting what about thing the is... visitor visas? When, when are we, we, we able to see our families again? Well, so they say October, from October onward is when okay. visitor visas will open and then the offshore processing will open as well. Because right now, just remember, offshore processing is not happening. It's only that border exemption that's been granted from the New Zealand side that you're allowed to come in. Okay. What, what do they mean by opening? Will they be issuing them or will they take a few months to issue them? Um, so you can start applying. That's pretty much when you can start applying from October. And that's, you know, uh, and look, if processing takes 10, 20 days, then you're looking at November, possibly December to come in. Yeah. And that's for the tourists and so on. And, you know, you're opening up to the market now in the world, pretty much yeah. to come in and boost that economy. So that's Is there a chance happen. that they are going to bring that forward, Benita? Uh, possibly, because they're talking, I think, about August, but I think it all depends on what the government announces and what, what the flavor of the day is or the week is. I don't know, you know, because everything's done on the fly, if you notice. Everything's done uh, like the day before, including immigration policy, <laughs> you know. So, but, well, we have no idea. We're sitting in the dark, you know. Um, but uh, do you have a question? What, what, yeah. I, what I normally tell... Now, my wife hates me to say this. I call them knee jerkers. It, it is. <laughs> it is. They, they, you know, like even policy. Now, the, the most interesting part is the job market for those people looking to immigrate permanently, you know. And that's, I think, where a lot of people are saying. Uh, and they've been assessed by advisors saying that they're eligible to come in. Now, look, this is my opinion. This is my feeling. OK, and this is my ethos. OK, is that I won't assess an offshore applicant right now if I don't know the pathways that they have to residence. Yep. And that is my my that, that is the way I work. Uh, some advisors don't work that way. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. OK, but for viewers out there, you need to know look, what do you want to come? Do you want to come in and work for a few years and go back to South Africa or whichever other country you're coming from? Or do you want to stay permanently? And right now, that there's only one pathway for sure. Okay. Yeah. Now, the big thing is the accredited employer work visa and working with employees. That whole thing is changing drastically. Okay. When, I, when I say it's changing is that now it's no longer driven by the applicant, but by the employer wanting to hire migrants. And there's a massive cost to them, Young, uh, in the sense that um, if you are employing anybody on a temporary visa from offshore, even onshore, you need to get accreditation. All right. And there's two steps that the employer needs to follow. The last step is the applicant, which is a very simple step. Um, so recruitment costs, um, the cost of hiring migrants is going to increase drastically. Yeah, I fully agree with that. And it's going to impact the economy. But I want to stop you here for a moment. I've got this question. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if you remember Herman Ruth. Oh, yes, I do. Yes. Okay. I believe it's here because it says Facebook user. How's it done? Watching it from Mexico, which is the best tequila brand around, according to you. Okay. All right. I, I, uh, Jan, he's asking you that question. I don't drink alcohol, so I wouldn't know. Tequila. Oh, like All right. right. So from tequila. <laughs> <laughs> All the way back to immigration. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
maybe maybe another viewer would be able to tell us. So, you know, vodka's been banned. Just remember that again. So, <laughs> the Russian like, vodka. Russian, yeah, it's been banned. Sorry about that. But yes. the kids not banned. So no, no. Uh, right. So, so coming but, back. The future know, for South Africans that that want to come in. Um, currently, so I, I know a lot of other immigration agents are just charging them money now and taking deposits and stuff like this. And, and I actually feel, I'm sorry about this, I feel it's it's unethical. Really, I feel it's unethical. You can't you can't take money from somebody and make them a promise which you cannot deliver on at all. Look, to be, look, my opinion, and this is, again, my ethical standing, you know, my, um, what I follow, okay? I cannot do an eligibility assessment for an applicant right now. And the reason is that skilled migrant category under the points tested system is being reviewed. And it's most likely, in my opinion, and my disclaimer as well, most likely going to change. So, you know, right now we know or the way it's set up is if you settle outside of Auckland, you're going to get 10 points, right, for somebody who's scrambling okay. for points, okay? okay. But those regions have already been assessed and changed. Immigration and the government themselves have reassessed and said that these are now the cities and these are now the regions. So how points are going to be allocated or extra points, we don't know what that's going to be. We don't know if the age is going to change. We also don't know with regards to skills assessment and qualifications if that's going to change. So how do you assess somebody to say you are eligible to come to New Zealand? Right now, the only eligibility for somebody under the accredited employer work visa, which will start on the 4th of July, is 200% of the median wage, okay? That is 200% of um, the median wage will be 21, sorry, 27.76 from the 4th of July, all right? So it's about, uh, I think, 116 something. Sorry, I was supposed to work at that figure and I didn't work at that figure. But that's where you can get residence. The rest of the people we don't know, points tested system, the points tested system will come back, but we don't know what that looks like. For a startup, I'm going to say that's a high figure. It is a high figure. High figure. <laughs> For pr professions like, you know, uh, like construction project managers, you know, or, or the construction industry, quantity yeah. surveyors, IT industry, and so on, you, you have people being able to earn that figure. But yeah. when it comes to people like in the trades and so on, you know, that middle sort of sector, you, they're going to really struggle. So right now, we don't know what that pathway is besides the one pathway to residence, 200% of median yeah. wage, and they have to wait two years be able, to be able to be granted residence. And let, let me put it out there. It is the trades that is making this country go around. It is the carpenters, it's the mechanics, it's those people that, that work with these two things that yeah. makes this country go around. And I'll be quite frank about that. Um, I know in South Africa, to be a mechanic is probably not the best way to earn a living down there. And I'm not putting it out badly. I want to put, put it in this way. But it's a sure way, or it was always a very sure way to get to New Zealand. That's right. And, you know, right now we have the skills shortage list. But mm. that's going to be revamped again. It hasn't been looked at for two years, all right? Yep. And, look, this is my opinion. This is my feeling. This is from what I've read, what the cabinet papers are saying, what immigration is saying, what the minister is saying as well. There are sectors and there's going to be sector agreements okay so those sectors are like for instance yeah there's currently the it sector and the education sector that said that they want 300 teachers right the it sector have said that they need 600 um it professionals but only in these professions so it's not a broad number okay, okay? okay. or broad profession they've listed the uh, you know um the, the professions so there's going to be sector agreements and in those sectors the employers are going to say we need automotive mechanics mm. but the, the government's going to say we can only bring in a hundred per year yeah you know and this is a salary that it needs to be at okay so if employers are going to scoop up those places or spaces to bring those people in that number is going to reduce to that okay yeah. so Immigration, you know, like the, you know, the minister, if you remember last year, which no one knew about when what whatever Nash stood in, and they they spoke about the great rebalance or reset the immigration reset. 
this is what they're talking about. It's no longer going to be massive amounts of people coming in. It's going to be reduced and it's going to be reviewed maybe every six months, depending on how that is and how that market's going. Yep. My, my, my thoughts on this is, um, and now you can see I'm not an immigration advisor. <laughs> I'm thinking about the financial impact it's going to have on people like me and you. Yeah. Because the next thing is they're going to put a salary up there for, let's yes. say, for instance, a mechanic. In order to pay that salary, somebody's got to be paying way more money um, on on the repair of your vehicle, those type of things. It's going to become expensive or more expensive. And even exactly. in the long run, um, that, is, that is going to influence our inflation. Exactly. It's not a good picture we're looking at. No. And the thing is, the driver right now is New Zealand have said, and this is with the accredited employee work visa. Yes, yesterday we had a had a webinar with Immigration New Zealand talking about the accredited employee work visa. And the drive is New Zealanders first in jobs before anybody else. That is why they are making it much harder for employers to go through this whole accreditation process, the recruitment costs, the settlement costs, everything. And they need to be reported on, you know, for the first 12 months. And then afterwards, once immigration is happy with that, then you can get accreditation for 24 months. Okay. I can see the benefits to migrant exploitation and the avoidance of that, but there's also holes in that policy right now, you know, um, and, and I'll just talk briefly about just the accredited employer work visa. There's, there's like a few schemes involved in that. There's a standard accreditation for five or five or lower. Okay. Yep. Is a, then then there's a high volume accreditation for more for six and above. Okay, then you've got the franchises, and then you've got third party. Um, you know, people placing um, employees with third parties, like trade staff or labor hire companies. Play, you know, hiring you but placing you at, for instance, like Coca Cola to work yeah. to work at. Okay. Now the thing is this: um, with with regards to that, there's holes in there. If a standard, uh, you know, like a standard accredited employer, which is hiring less than five people, okay, they lose a staff member or that staff member decides, okay, that this job is too hard. I'm either quitting, but I'm not going to another employer, right? And they're in New Zealand. That employer now has a space to hire someone else. He's going to call immigration and going to tell immigration, Young Fulian has left my company. Now, Young Fulian doesn't have another job. So he's in breach of his visa conditions because he's not working for another employer. Yep. So, so there's a lot of things that's going to happen that's not going to be to the benefit of the, uh, you know, the, the the migrant worker. You know, so so, so they're it's not trying to make it easy for the migrant worker. By the way, they're not. They're not, but they are making it better in some regards, you know, uh, because your employer is now responsible for your settlement, for you yeah. to know where to go, you know, to know your employer, uh, employee rights, you know, which a lot of, you know, new migrants don't know what their rights That's are right. and so on, you know. So so there's benefits to it and there's also there's a downside to it. So, so what I'm trying to say is, you're coming in, make sure you know your pathway to residence. And right now there's only one pathway that we know of. Yep. Know that you can get a visa for longer than a year, you know, um, and know what salaries and so on you're earning. Okay. Um, and time will tell, you know, what that's going to look like. Yeah, but this, this one pathway is the current one and there's, there's nothing else currently or yet being. Not out. that we know of. Mm. Exactly. Yes. Are you, and, and we'll few, are you ready for a few questions? Yeah, yeah okay. absolutely. Interesting question on, on the other ones. I can't put it on, on screen, but Frankie Rasmus asking current residence options for people over 55 prediction for these people in the future. Um, so, so we know the cutoff age under the skilled migrant category is 55 right now. And you've got to be, you know, and obviously you can apply for residence, um, you know, a little bit older, uh, well, depending, you know, on what type of visa you were, you know, if you're on work to residence, you could be at 56 and apply for, for, um, residence. But if you were under the skilled migrant category, you had to be applying for residence by 55. You know, um, we, you know, the superannuation um, scheme is changing where you can access superannuation. These, these are for migrant workers and so on. 
And that has been brought down from 10 years to 20 years, I should yeah. say. So, so what, what Juanita is talking about, the government, you get a government pension. So once if you are a migrant, you're not. And, and it's about 20 years from the date that you started off in New Zealand. Is it from your residence date or is it from the date of the first? It's yeah, so that's. So it's from your resident date, pretty much. So, you know, 55 was the age because at 65, you could start claiming yeah. for your superannuation, okay, for your retirement. But now the government's brought that down to 20 years, so now it's 45. Yeah. Now, the thing is, that tells me, and as I say, it's my opinion, it indicates because everything flows into the migrate, uh, Immigration Act, okay, and, and, you know, all these different bits feed in. That tells me that our age is most likely going to change to 45 because we have an aging population and we really do. I mean, young, yeah. you know this. We have too far or too few younger people to support the economy and so on going forward. And, and the one problem is, geez, I, I'm not tackling any any um, political party down here, but the thing is, the, the, the opportunities for young people to stay in New Zealand and to become a part of society is just not there. It's not. The, the no, pain is not for those people to grab their stuff, go to uh, or, or wherever else in the world and work there for a period of time, earning money in that country, paying yeah. taxes in the other country. Yeah. It's it's just not viable. I mean. Absolutely. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, the thing is, our salaries are lower and I suppose immigration uh, and the government are trying to push salaries up. That's why they're saying we want to rely less on migrant workers coming in. We need more of our people to be in jobs, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, but but yes, our salaries are a lot lower compared to a lot of the other countries. And the, the problem with higher salaries always sounds so brilliant. It sounds like the best thing in the world. But it increases prices on the ground. Yes. It does increase yeah, prices on the ground. That leads to higher yes. inflation in the long run. Yes. So, yes. But they, there has been some sectors who has been really badly paid in this country because it's expensive to live here. Here's a yeah. question coming from a Facebook user who I don't know who they are. How does this affect people coming in on CPVV in May who will apply for essential skills once they land? Well, probably will they still qualify for the 2021 resident visa? So if you come in on the critical purpose visitor visa, if you're earning 106.080 and above, mm -hmm. you can apply for the 2021 resident visa immediately. And that closes on the 31st of July. Okay. But if you're earning lower than that, no, you can't. You will have to wait for the skilled migrant category points tested system to open. And then you'd be able to apply for residence. What is what is going to happen to the investor visa? For somebody asked me the other day. Um, the, that that, that hasn't visa. closed yet. The investor okay. the investor visas hasn't closed. They've been processing and so on. And I know yeah. I think they've allocated more staff. I think there's about thirty nine staff um, now allocated to the, the processing of those visas. So that will still carry on as per normal. Obviously, there are maybe tighter laws within certain countries, you know, to yeah. bring the money over and so on. Uh, but it's still going on as per normal. And that is still just to bring back to the investor visas where you put $3.5 million into investments, because I've been helping some people with those investments, $3.5 million of investment. And then uh, immigration will grant you immigration status down here or resident status or whatever. I don't know. I don't know the immigration side, I know the investment side. So do you yeah. think the amount of 3.5 mil is going to stay in that amount? Um, I don't I don't know, Jan. The thing is, um, it's hard because obviously every country is now actually wanting these investors to come in to boost the economy. OK. Yeah. And um, um, I mean, obviously, Australia has a very aggressive investment uh, program as well for investors. And they're trying to entice investors in. And they've been doing this since last year, actually. Mm. You know, um, and this is a little bit lower, but these some are points tested, you know, depending on your age. And some are not, and obviously there's more investment involved, um, you know, um, if you're above a certain age, you know, but but that's what it is. The investors, you know, they, they, their money is tied in for four years. They get approval like a resident uh, visa, but you need to meet the criteria after two years and then again after four years. And then you grant your residence, you know, proper yeah. properly, you know, so that's okay. what that is. Okay. Yeah. All right, I've got another question on the other side, um, also from Frankie Rasmus. The guy just asked about the people over 55. He goes on with his question and he says, 
If you don't qualify for residency based on age, can you renew your work visa until you pass on? <laughs> okay, that's a funny question, but that's okay. There's never been. I can new... see the mobility scooter going down. <laughs> so, Jan, okay. you probably wanted to sell him life insurance, right? So, <laughs> but anyway, look, there's never been a limit to how many work visas you can get. There's Is always. There kind of page? there's no cut off age for work visas at all. There's never been a cut off age. The only thing is that you need to meet the criteria every time you apply for a new work visa. That's the most important thing. Yep. And the day you don't meet the criteria is the day where your work visa is possibly declined and then you have to pack up and go back to your home country. And that's always the, um, uh, what's the word? The, you know, it's always been the uncertainty for temporary work visa, uh, temporary visa holders, I should say. All right. You remember Johan Kotsaboyki? Yes. Question from him this morning. Morning, Jan and Vanita. Do you think we will be able to get visitors December? Uh, yes, because you know what? The indication is that they're in, from October onwards, Johan, they're opening up for visitor visas, you know, and tourists to come in. So, yes, your son can definitely come in because uh, <laughs> I know what he's talking about. <laughs> uh, you know, but it's just, it's just, you know, uh, it's just, it's when we start opening that, then you can start applying for it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it's interesting. So, if, if he brings his son in, he can come for a fish with me. I will take them out of it. So. Yeah. Yeah. What, what else is new in, in the immigration field? I know not a lot has been happening. and uh... so, so, look, there's a lot behind the scenes in terms of the accredited employer work visa. So now we're starting to work with employers, getting a lot of calls from employers saying, we need critical staff. I've got CV sitting on my desk. I can't get anybody here. How can I bring them in? So right now it's the border exemption with those figures that we spoke about earlier. That's the only way you can bring them in. And then we're preparing employees for accreditation as well. So right now, employers may not want to get accreditation, but that's okay, all right? So if you've got migrant staff that are working for you, what you need to do is look at the expiry of their essential skills work visas or their, their, their visas, okay? If they're not going for residence or depending on what that is, because right now there's like a whole mix of stuff happening. So say, for instance, you have an essential skills work visa holder whose visa is expiring, say, October or November of this year or maybe a, a middle of next year. You may want to encourage them to apply for a longer three-year work visa. Yeah. All right. So that will, that will mean that the employer themselves don't need to get accreditation right now. They can get accreditation later on. All right. And they can still keep those staff members. So that's what they need to look at. Um, so, even, and obviously, so even people who's currently got staff members need to get re-accredited. Oh, yes, yes. So if your accreditation, so say if you have accreditation currently going, okay, that's going to, so I think if there's six months on it from May onward, you, you don't need to do new accreditation, but, um, um, but the old system's expiring. So everybody has to go on the new system. No matter, no matter who they are, okay? And right now, only the essential skills work visas are available. There's no other work visa available. Okay. Right. One, one, other thing, one other thing that I think people need to probably know, and I read this in cabinet papers, okay? And it hasn't been decided as yet. You, you, if you remember, and you know this, Jan, you know, if you're the main applicant, you can support your partner on an open work visa, yeah. right? That has always been the case. Now, there is talk that the partners may not be able to get open work visas. They may only be eligible for visitor visas, okay? This has been in the cabinet paper. It has not been decided as yet. So if you're, you're hoping for your, you know, two people to be working, I don't know what that pathway would be for the, the partner. And we'll have to see if that has been announced. But just remember, this has not been in policy as yet. It's yeah. just been recommended and so on. Okay. Yeah. That, that, that could be a, a massive spanner in the works. 
it will be a big game changer for a lot of people because you know the cost of living is very high oh, yeah. in right now and two people kind of have to work to be able to make ends meet especially supporting a family and so oh, on yeah. you know and everybody helps so so not being able to have an open work visa for your partner or your spouse or whatever that's going to be a big game changer but how they will be able to get a work visa we don't know um yeah. and it's still you know right now you can and it hasn't been decided so i just want to make that clear right yeah yeah, yeah that could that could be a, a, a quite a big game changer perhaps and make a lot of people think that it's probably not the best place to come to and, and that is why we need the policies to be released to be able to say to people, okay, this is your pathway, this is what you can do, this yeah. is what you can't do, you know, and, and be 100% sure. And that's why I'm saying I won't take an offshore applicant if I'm not 100% sure, you know, oh, yeah. and that's me currently. But, uh, you know, that's no disrespect to the profession and the advisors that are doing this, okay? So, um, but at least I, I know if you, if anybody, um, comes to you and ask you some questions you're always there to help them so yeah thanks a lot for that i mean it gives me it gives me a good feeling to when i say to somebody i yeah, just ask Juanita, she knows everything so. <laughs> I, have, I have been slack though young yeah, yeah, and the reason why i've been slack and i know people have said i've sent you messages is because i don't know how to answer it and i don't know how to give you a, an answer it's because i don't know the answer do you know what i mean so, so I mean, if you don't know the answer nobody else is going to know the answer no mm -hmm. other regulation advisor is going to have the answers because no but look, look yeah. in the next few weeks hopefully fingers crossed we'll have some more clarity yeah let's hope for the best all right that was us thanks Vanita, uh, for your time this morning um let's just greet the people guys and girls back next week next week yeah it's a long weekend coming on hey eh? yeah Ooh. enjoy <laughs> easter everybody and we now we'll have the right to tequila in Mexico from here onwards because it's a long weekend here. So, all right. Rita, thanks a lot for everything. Guys and girls, we see you next week, same time, same place. All right. And we out of here.